Hi lovelies, Rob here from Kickback Garage. Let's build a scooter. Well, looky looky. Ooh. <laughs> uh, my man Steve, oh, what a brilliant guy. Um, he, <laughs> he painted this, he's doing a little bit of moonlighting for me. So he, uh, he's been working the evenings and uh, weekends and maybe some time during the day uh, while his boss is in quarantine. <laughs> Thank God for Corona. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it's only uh, nine days since I gave him this and it's already back in my garage painted and got loads of shiny bits and there's like a gorgeous smell of uh, fresh paint in the garage here now. It's just lovely. It's, oh, and just really can't wait to crack on. And as you see, uh, on my way to work today, well, on my way, I, I came in the garage uh, this morning. I was uh, to grab my bike because I cycled to work. And I was looked at the clock and I was like, ah, well, uh, I don't need to go for another 10 minutes. And I started, uh, I just can't keep my fingers off it. So um, what I wanted to do before I take this off, I just want to show you how I managed to press in the, uh, uh, bearing seats and uh, uh, crown ring. This is how I've been doing it for ages. Um, and how I've done it the last five or six times at least here. Um, I just use the threaded bar and <laughs> uh, the, the most universal tool in uh, the Lambretta world uh, is a, um, a used silent block. The cool thing about the silent block is it's actually a perfect fit inside where your uh, top race fits. Um, so I use that on the top, an array of uh, washers and stuff at the bottom. Do you think I could get this out and show you? Uh, so what I did at the bottom is, I used a, uh, an old crown race, which I turned upside down. You can see that, that's good. And uh, I held it at the bottom, and what you do is, you thread down the bar, with, the, with these uh, gadgets on, and you just uh, pull in one race at a time because that gives you a lot more chance of not, um, not elongating the, the, the area where they sit and a bigger chance of getting them in uh, flush. So I, I pressed in that first and then I put on the um, silent block and then I, I fit the... Uh, Lower cone with the uh, guard here. It's not quite pressed in. I can still move it a bit. Um, and I used the uh, bottom race upside down. I used one and a big fat washer and pulled in the uh, lower one. So what I'm going to do now is uh, fit the upper race in the uh, chrome ring. And I've also fit the uh, grub screw there, as you can see. So my plan today, while I'm doing this, I thought I'd talk at the same time. I'm such a good multitasker. <laughs> um, while I'm uh, doing this, uh, what I thought, the plan, I tell you, what, what <laughs> just, <laughs> I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. I'm going to be very careful. Uh, tea and uh, fresh paint. Not a good idea, but uh, I'm going to be very careful, I promise. So, <laughs> I've even spilt some, damn you. <laughs> um, so, the plan today is, basically, I want to get this up on uh, one wheel and the stand. So, I've crown race first, I'm going to fit the stand and splash plate. I've actually never fit a splash, splash plate before, so that should be interesting. Uh, get the stand on, then fit the fork. Uh, tighten down the uh, fork at the top there, then it stood by itself, and then I'm going to do some uh, smaller jobs. Now, my philosophy when it comes to uh, building scooters from the ground up is, uh, don't rush it, obviously, but uh, I, I sort of like to do a major job, and then I like to do a not-so-major job. So, in this case, I was thinking about um, fitting, like, the toolbox door, but I, I'm going to leave that until I've done the toolbox and that but we do have like uh, the rear grill I need to fit the rear light before I fit the uh, mug guard and I'll stop blab blabbling blabbling and uh, I'll get this sorted 
And I give it a good, a good shove while I'm up here so that I make sure that the bottom race, oh, the bottom race is sitting nice and tight. Ah, lovely jubbly. This is a satisfying job. Now, while I'm peeling off this, uh, if you want to meet my painter, Steve, then I'll put a, a little link uh, at the top of the window there, uh, where I help Steve out with uh, a few bits and bobs. And he uh, is a nice lad. And that's actually one of my most popular videos. So if you haven't seen that, go and have a look. Look at that. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Obviously, first job, fit the stand feet. Now, these stand feet are from uh, Castle Lambretta. Um, the last few sets I've uh, fit have come from Scrutopia. Uh, about the same quality, Scrutopia is cheaper, but because of Brexit, it cost me a fortune to uh, bring stuff in from the UK. Postage prices are really expensive. So it's Castle uh, Lambretta this time. So. Important thing here, all you have to do is fit the boot with the hole for the split pin so that it corresponds with the hole on the stand. And to do that, I actually just, uh, you could use wa hot water and all sorts of stuff. I actually just belt it with a rubber mallet. Just got to keep your eye out. There. And I think that's lined up with the hole. What I'm going to do is poke some kind of implement in there to see if it's lined up with the hole. Right, I've lined it up with the hole there. Easy peasy. Just used my uh, rubber mallet. And uh, now it's a simple case of fitting your roll pins. Uh, they're a bit tight. So for this uh, job, you need to use a BBH or a bloody big hammer. I tend to knock these things flush. Something like that will do. That'll do nicely. That'll do nicely. Right, time to fit the stand. So, because this is a series two, I find these quite easy. Um, I uh, apply some uh, grease on the bottom of the strut there. I'm not sure if it's the right thing to do, but, uh, for me, it makes sense in my head. Uh, I then uh, grease the, and uh, <laughs> if you notice, I'm using clear grease. It's just so that it doesn't look as bad. Uh, and I wipe off the excess, obviously, when I've done. But, um, and, I, and I grease the end there, um, where the spring fits. I'd like to use uh, that boat grease that I use, the marine grease, but um, yeah, I think I'll give that a go as well. Um, but it's uh, it's like a bright red color, so I don't want to I don't want to do that here. Which way should that go? I have to think. And thinking is hard. Thinking I'm filming. So if you look at the way the spring is most natural way to fit that will be that way so I'm going to do that I can never remember which way it's supposed to go and so let's see if I can hook it on there it came off pretty easy and I really don't want to scratch it there we go I just pop it up behind there Ugh, get in there you bugger like so, something like that. And my brackets are purposefully 
sat right on the other side of the bench so I can't get to him. Hmm. I think that looks right, doesn't it? Something like that, I reckon. So that's all my bolts loosely affixed. Doesn't that look about right? It's a bit dirty. Dirty fingers. <laughs> nice. Um, what I think I need to do is uh, let the uh, stand down so that it sits flush with the uh, with the floor, uh, floorboard strut. And I can uh, adjust them up a little bit and uh, tighten it all down. Uh, but first, <laughs> I need to put the uh, rubber on the stand foot there. So I found my stand rubber, the one that fits on there. And what I'm going to try and do now <laughs> is, is put the, uh, put the uh, stand down because what's happening is it's fighting against the uh, spring tension here, lifting it up on the top. And I just haven't got the He-Man type abilities of pulling it down... Um, pushing it down towards the strut. So what I'm thinking is when I uh, fold the stand down, then that should uh, sit flush on the strut and uh, give me a better chance of uh, pushing this whole assembly up against the uh, strut there. But uh, yeah, so this is probably where I uh, trap my fingers, uh, drop my frame off my bench. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it without wrecking paint. Oh, there we go. Oh, ah, easy peasy, Rob. What, what are you talking about? That was a piece of cake. Right, let's uh, put it up. Uh. <coughs> Yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> and there she is, up on her own little two little legs. Bless, lovely little thing. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, normally <laughs> I'd try and find a, a, a fun job, but uh, yeah, I just wanna get this fork on, to tell you the truth. So I am, as in previous videos, uh, I am fitting loose balls. If you wanna know how to do that, I'll post a card up at the top there, and uh, I'll just have to crack on. Well, my lovelies, I didn't uh, show you uh, how to build the fork because I've already done that. And uh, if you're interested in uh, how you fit the BGM front disc, then I'll post a link up there. I obviously built this while, uh, while the back of the scooter was at the painters. Now, I went for the uh, BGM disc because it's... Uh, yeah, I've, I, I think I've explained that before. It's basically because it looks original on the one side, and it's a nice little stopper, this is. It's got a nice big 220 disc, and it's not quite as expensive as the uh, Castle, Perform uh, Castle Performance disc. And I could use my master cylinder, so I saved a couple of pennies there. The setup here is these beautiful F16 BGM uh, shocks. I am using the 10% BGM 10% stronger spring. Uh, the reason why I've chosen that is because that's the same setup that I had on the Series 1, and I loved it compared to the PM tuning disc I had on this, which I thought was pretty dismal. So that's why I've gone for that. Right, the fork is in, the stand is on. I've actually uh, done a few things uh, more than I was expecting to do tonight. I started a bit late. Um, what I wanted to show you, I've now fit the rear frame grill. grill. There's no point showing you how to do that. It's two screws, basically. But what I do want to, as a point of interest, what I do want to show you is that uh, you can't actually over restore these things. Now, this rear frame grill is the original. I know the whole history about this scooter, so I can assure you it's the original. But hopefully, if I can zoom it in, you can see that 
even though it's quite flush on the sides, both sides, and it's flush at the uh, base of the scooter there, you can actually see there's a little bit of a gap there. I'm not sure. I hope so. Please zoom in and show that well. <laughs> but uh, so they like they weren't perfect when they came from the factory. All I've done with this, I uh, I buffed it up on the wheel when I was finished with. Oh, now I'm dirty in it. <laughs> I buffed it up on the wheel when I was finished. Let me put you uh, have a little look at it from uh, behind. So it looks perfectly okay, but yeah. If that was going to be judged at some sort of uh, some sort of inicente elegance de concourse or something like that, uh, they'd probably say that, uh, that that doesn't fit properly. But that, that's how it was from the factory. So the next job you need to do before I fit the rear mug guard, I always have to fit the rear mug guard before the engine, um, and I want to fit the uh, what they called the wiring loom. Before I do that, I want to fit the uh, rear light and the rear mug guard holder. The, <laughs> the funny thing about this is this gasket here, this is actually the original gasket from the factory. It's uh, really brittle and horrible. Uh, I thought I'd give a go at trying to fit a new one. I've been actually looking for these for ages. They normally are sold out. A lot of people fit grey ones, but because the original was white, I'm going to be a little bit pedantic and try and fit the white one. Now, where is my rear... Oh, my rear light has been painted. I have to go and find it. So, fitting the rear light on the Series 2 can be a little bit tricky. Um, just remember, do this, like I said, do this before you fit your uh, mug guard. Otherwise, it's going to be completely and utterly... Uh, massively a nightmare and uh, these <laughs> these <laughs> reproduction uh, gaskets are sort of you have to stretch stretch <laughs> stretch to fit <laughs> they're a real pain to try and uh, get on the light there so what I'm going to have to do is offer it up and then squeeze squeeze the uh, gasket around the around the light uh, before I start on this, I do want to say is uh, on the back of the Series 2, you've got this like uh, bracket with a, a chamfer on it. This sits on the back side, that way. And if you can see here, I've got no paint there and I've got no paint on that side. The reason for that is because that's where your uh, uh, frame earth comes from. That was a complete and massive nightmare. What I ended up having to do is pull in the light as, as far as I, I did by uh, tightening the uh, screws on the back here. And I actually get a, had to get a screwdriver, I had to push it down, the gasket here, push it down, get a screwdriver in there and actually prise out over the lip. Such a nightmare. And uh, at the top here, it's a little bit baggy. I can actually push it push it down there but uh that's gonna have to do but uh yeah what <laughs> what a complete nightmare that was i don't think i uh, damaged anything uh because as soon as you get your screwdriver out it's really important to mask up the area <laughs> that you think you might scratch and basically i masked up the whole the whole world here <laughs> Oh dear. Right, so that's a real light fit. And the last job of the evening, I will be fitting the uh, mudguard holder plate. Um, you don't get these on Series C, so this, if this is your first uh, Series 2 uh, restoration or build, then uh, you get these like rubber grommets. And there's two different sizes. If you see on the on the front side, the side that goes towards the plate, there's like a indentation there. That fits on where your screw goes. Like so. The two short ones at the top and the fat one at the bottom.
Right, my lovely, so that's the end of the video here. Uh, it's already looking like a scooter, which is uh, very nice, very nice. Um, as you can see, the uh, I've got to sort out the uh, wiring loom. I need to fit some cables. I need to fit the uh, rear mudguard. I was hoping I was going to do that tonight, but it's, yeah, you know, these things, sometimes they take longer than you want them to. Um, yeah, cooking on gas. Don't forget, if you like this kind of stuff, do the old uh, thumbs up and the subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ta-ra! <laughs>